A couple years ago, we took a look through the 12 main stories of the ancient scriptures, the Bible. And in the beginning of time, we discovered that very early on, people quickly ignored God and got really mean and violent and tried to control each other with power and force and money. In fact, it got so bad, in Genesis chapter 6, it says, The Lord saw that the human beings on the earth were very wicked and that everything they thought about was evil. God was sorry that God made humans and God's heart was full of pain. So God decided to make a fresh start and have a flood wipe out everything on the earth. But there was this guy Noah, who is described as the most innocent man of his time. So God gives Noah guidance on how to survive this flood with his family and a bunch of the creation that God has designed. Noah and his sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth, those are some pretty awesome names, his wife and his sons' wives all survived this giant flood in a boat called an ark with animals and with lots of food. Now I have a contest for just the kids that are watching. Uh, if you can answer this, text me or email me your answer. And if you're the first person to respond, you'll win. So for $100, who can tell me the actual name of Noah's wife as found in the book of Genesis in the Bible? You might have a hard time. So if we don't know her name, we're going to have to investigate this. So read Genesis chapter 6, verse 18. No name here. Probably just an oversight. God is just talking to Noah here, so maybe it would have been awkward to work in everybody's names. Uh, so maybe let's check out Genesis chapter 7, verse 6 and 7. Okay, what do you think is going on here? Is this on purpose that we're not getting to know her name? Let's give it one more try. Uh, let's look at Genesis chapter 7 verses 12, 13, and 14. Perhaps this is intentional. The writer here names all the guys and none of the women. Why is that? Well, the next few weeks, we're gonna be spending some time talking about inheritance. Inheritance most often comes up when somebody dies, right? The family gathers and at some point, the belongings of the person who died are given to people as they wished. Jen's dad will chat with her and her siblings about their inheritance and the changes that they're making to the will. And she says sometimes those conversations are, are awkward. Uh, my parents haven't done that. I guess I have no inheritance or worse, maybe my inheritance is everything that's in my parents' basement. Remember I said my mom was a, was a hoarder a few weeks ago, so either that's my inheritance or a curse. My wife Jen says her grandma would often have them uh, come to their house when they were younger and write their names on pieces of tape and they could go around her house and they could put a label of their name on anything they wanted of hers. In general though, Inheritance refers to anything that's passed along from person to person. Typically this happens down from one generation to the next, but it could happen from friend to friend, often with the words, don't ever sell this. Like, would you want this as an inheritance? The stories of scripture are a kind of inheritance. They've been passed down through the centuries upon centuries. In fact, they outdate the word century and the word inheritance for that matter. Our understanding of God and grace is a spiritual inheritance. To really dig into our inheritance, though, we need to feel like we're a part of the story. That this story belongs to me. It belongs to you. What do you make of the absence of Noah's wife's name? She obviously had a name. They didn't just call her, hey, Noah's wife. She is part of one of the most shared stories in history, but somehow didn't even rate being named. Why would that be okay with everybody as they passed that story down? I have a question to ask you. Have you ever felt nameless? Has anyone ever forgot your name or called you by the wrong name? 
pause the video and talk about your experience with that, how it made you feel uh, with the people that you're watching with, call or text a friend and ask them, or just ponder the question for yourself. So because we know names are so important, we want to go say hi to some people and we're going to use their name specifically. Well, we're going to use a name and see how they respond. We don't know if it's their name or not. Hey, Brian. How's it going? Not Brian. You're not Brian? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Not. You look like a Brian. Hey, Smith family. How are you? Hi. You're the Smith family, right? No. Oh, no? no. Okay. Sorry about that. I think that's Lisa over here. Hey, Lisa. How's it going? Lisa, right? Uh, totally. Your name's Lisa, right? No. no? Are you Lisa? She's on the phone. She doesn't want to talk to me. Is your name Lisa? That's not Lisa? No. I thought there was a Lisa here. Hi, Kelly. It's so good to see you. What's up? Okay. <laughs> hey, Tyson. 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 Your name Tyson? No, no, no. Oh, sorry. Okay, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> this guy's Mick. Hey, hey, Mick. 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 Your name Mick? No. Oh, his name's not Mick. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody's named Mick. <laughs> oh, and there's Jesse. Hey, Jesse. 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 Not Jesse. Oh, all right. Not Jesse. Okay, I totally think I just saw Elvis. Let's go see Elvis. Elvis Presley. This is for my Aunt Audrey. She loves Elvis. Hi, Derek. How you doing? I'm good. So it seems that people don't respond unless you actually use their name. Must be the names are important. I don't know about you, but when someone doesn't know your name and they call you a different name, it kind of feels weird, especially if you think they should know you. It's this thing that is just yours, your name, and it kind of defines you in a way. I have a great friend who is terrible with names. His name is Chris. And once we were chatting with our other friend, who was also named Chris, about going out and doing something. And, and he's saying, yeah, we should go, like you, me, and, and he forgot our friend's name, which is the same name as his. And he said, my name is Chris. It's the same as yours. How would you feel if people just referred to you as person with the wavy hair or tall guy or a person who sat next to me. When do you most feel a part of your own story? Well, when there's a sense of belonging, you're a part of things, you're included, you're seen and you're named. In our current culture, we're relatively removed from the older concepts of inheritance and birthright that dictate the movement of power and occasional wealth in scriptures. Also common in the culture of these ancient scriptures is the tendency toward exclusion of women, a trend that still has uh, hurdles to be overcome today. Think of even just the constantly conflicting messages that uh, females in our culture still get. Many of us have probably heard that earlier last month, Norway's Beach Handball Federation was fined after its women's team wore shorts instead of bikini bottoms in the bronze medal match of the European Handball Championships in Varna, Bulgaria. I mean, this is a prime example of hurdles that women are still trying to overcome. This is a challenge to inheritance of God's kingdom that women in the scriptures also faced. Inheritance was always traced from the male people in families. So some of these lesser known females in history, like Noah's wife, while we don't know her name, are no less a part of the inheritance of God's kingdom. And that needs to be said. And more importantly, it needs to be lived. Patriarchy needs to end. Patriarchy doesn't have a place in the inheritance of faith. So I have a question I want you to chat about. What parts of your faith do you most easily recognize as inherited? What sources provided those things to you? Pause the video and talk about that with the people you're watching with. Call or text a friend and ask them, or just ponder the question for yourself.
You are a part of God's great family. You've been given a great inheritance. In Romans chapter 8 it says, If we are God's children, we will receive blessings or an inheritance from God together with Christ. But we must suffer as Christ suffered so that we will have glory as Christ has glory. We need to let all womankind know that they are not overlooked. What centuries of humanity has gotten wrong, God is bringing restoration and inclusion to, which is why Jesus came to show us all that each person, regardless of gender, color, culture, status, or material possessions, you have been given a name. God sees you. You are a part of this. This story is your story. In 1 Peter it says, you have a pure and enduring inheritance that cannot perish, an inheritance that is presently kept safe in heaven for you. I wholeheartedly believe this. And while we clearly see differences in gender, there is no hierarchy. There's no ideology or women as second class, tagged along with named men. In Galatians chapter 3, it says, This means that you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. In Christ, there is no difference between Jew and Greek, slave and free, person, male or female. You are all the same in Christ Jesus. You belong to Christ, so you are Abraham's descendants. You will inherit all of God's blessings because of the promise God made to Abraham. So we need to be reminded that our history of faith is filled with women who have been pillars of strength and power and influence for us. This is our inheritance. Even from the family tree of Jesus, the ancient ancestor Rahab, a prostitute who sold her body for money, a woman who helped the Israelite spies, leading to the victory of God's people to be led where God desired them to be. Every woman, regardless of reputation, is loved by God. Every man too. This is our inheritance. This is our history. The prophet Isaiah spoke the words of God by saying, don't fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you're through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you won't be scorched and flame won't burn you. What has been failed to be named like Noah's wife is now being named. You are called to God. You belong to God. You are God's most loved children and God is your loving parent. In order to grasp your full inheritance from God, you need to understand that this is how God sees you. You are known, you are seen, you are loved, you are named. God knows you totally and loves you totally. This is the beginning of your inheritance. Peace. I just want to encourage you to hit all the like buttons on this video. It helps us to know that you're watching. As well, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page and our Instagram, and do ask how you can be included in one of our tiny village churches.